Hi, I'm Rachel, I'm a Maths and Stats tutor and I'm going to give you a quick rundown of Excel and SPSS and how they are different. So the first question is what are Excel and SPSS? Well Excel and SPSS are both computer programs and they're designed for both data storage and data manipulation. This means that they can be used as databases as well as for analysing data in both small ways and in more complex ways. They're both available for both Windows and Macs, um, so either of those is fine. If you're a Linux user, however, they're not available for you, but there are alternative, broadly similar platforms out there. So let's start by taking a look of, at Excel. So Excel will be available on all university computers and laptops. Um, Obviously, university systems use Windows, and to access it on Windows, you can go to the Start menu, um, go into All Programs, click Microsoft Office, and it's the green symbol with an X. On a Mac, assuming you've got, the you've got it on your computer, then you just go into the Launch Pad, and here it is. Again, we've got a green symbol with an X. So if we click that and open it up. So this is what Excel looks like. It might be familiar to a lot of you. So brief overview of what we've got here. So here on the left we've got numbers going down. These are our rows which are going across. So what I've got highlighted here is a row. And these are numbered. The numbers go down quite a way. So as you can see here, I'm into the thousands already. Um, I think there's just over a million rows. There's also columns. So that's these bits here going down. And these are labelled with letters. Again, there's lots of them. So if I keep going right, you can see my alphabet counting up. More and more letters getting added. So lots and lots of columns. So it's to all intents and purposes, a fairly infinite spreadsheet. Um, each of these little boxes is called a cell. So we've got these tabs here at the top, and I'm using the Mac version here. The Windows version is pretty much identical. Um, there's a few differences, um, but not much, and it will depend on which version of Excel you're using anyway. So tabs at the top. They're mainly formatting related. So here you can see we've got orientation, we've got backgrounds, headers and footers, we've got how our tables look, so table styles, colours. Um, the important ones to draw your attention to are the formula tab and the data tab. So these are the two that you'll be using if and when you put data in Excel. The Formulas tab, it gives you access to all of the data manipulation functions in Excel. And there are a lot of them. This is one of those tabs that will be a bit different in Windows as from a Mac. But for now, we'll just take a look at this one. So, let's enter just some dummy data. So, here we go. It doesn't mean anything, it's just some numbers. Just so we can see what's going on. So, what I can do is I can go to these functions and I can do things. So if I highlight my data and go to AutoSum, for example, it gives me a drop-down menu of what I can do with my data. So if I click Sum, it gives me the sum, which is all of my data points added together. If I click Average, it'll give me a mean or an average. So that kind of thing is what these functions do. Now, functions, they can be quite hard to find in this menu, as you can see from here. So pretty much AutoSum, it's got a five things that are easy to find. Um, in Windows, it's a bit easier, but still pretty difficult. So another way of um, manipulating our data is to type in the cells. So this is fairly laborious, I'll be honest, 
because you have to start each calculation with an equal sign, then start typing in your function. So for example, if I'm finding the sum again, I type in sum. It brings me up a drop down menu of all the um, functions that resemble what I'm actually looking for. I just want the top one and it gives me a pair of brackets. So what I need to do now is enter my data. So I want to tell it what data to do that sum function on. So I highlight it, it'll put the range in. You can also type this in, but that'll, that all means you need to know what row and what columns your data is in. Um, hit enter or return, and there we go. So this is the sum I've just calculated using a typed formula instead of the drop down menus in formulas. So this is fairly simple, but harder statistical tests become somewhat more involved and this is where Excel starts to become a little more um, limited. So let's take a look at SPSS. On many university computers SPSS will already be there, but it may not be on all of them. So for university computers you can download it yourself. Um, you can download it yourself onto your own personal computer as well and this is free. So once you've got the software installed on a Windows machine you would go to start and it's got that find box at the bottom. You type in SPSS and you're looking for SPSS statistics. There will be more than one version pop up but it's the statistics one you want. So on my Mac I've got my SPS statistics here. So if I open that up, now SPSS does take a little while to start up, so don't worry, and it takes even longer on Windows. Still working. <clears throat> so what we're going to see with SPSS um, is that two windows will open. Um, we will have... Ah, here we go. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here are our two windows. In the back, we've got the sp spreadsheet style one, and it looks remarkably like Excel. And we've also got this grey one in the front. It may sometimes be blue, depending on which version of SPSS you're using. So this front um, window is where we're going to choose whether to start a new SPSS document or open a current dataset or database. Um, on Windows, there's a tutorial option. So there's a box to click. On this, we can see tutorials down here. So if you scroll down, it will tell you um, how to do various things in SPSS. So you can look at that in your own time. For now, I'm actually just going to close this box and we'll just be left with a blank SPSS sheet. If you wanted to open a certain data set, you would go to File, Open, Data, and then you'd be able to choose your data set. But for now, let's have a blank one. So, like I said, it looks pretty similar to Excel so far. We have rows that are numbered. Again, there's lots of them. We can use as many rows as we want. However, in SPSS, our columns, so in Excel they were letters, in SPSS they are labelled var. This stands for variable, so it's a bit more... Um, useful. Because what we can do is, if you see down at the bottom, we have data view and variable view. Data view shows you your data set, so this page here, our spreadsheet. Variable shows you your variables. So if we go into variable view, we can see the sheet change slightly. So we've got name, type, decimals, that's number of decimal places, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some data in here. Um, so let's have five. Here we go. Again, another dummy data set. And you can see 
the var at the top change to var 00001. So if I now go to variable view, that variable will come up. So SPSS automatically detects when you have data in your spreadsheet. And what you can do in variable view is you can change the properties of your variables. So this is completely separate from actually changing your data. So we can change the name of the variables. So let's change it to random numbers. So that's something to be aware of. Um, SPSS has a few little quirks, like you can't have spaces in variable names. Um, for data types, we've got numeric, we've got scientific notation, we've got dates, we've got currencies, string, which just means words rather than numbers. Um, but the more important one is this over here called measure, and that tells us what our data type is. So we can have scale data, ordinal data, or nominal data. So this variable view lets us do a lot with our variables. Um, so changing the type of data enables SPSS to be able to do different things with our data. So there's certain tests we can only do with, for example, scale data that we can't do with ordinal or nominal. So once we tell Excel, um, SPSS what data types we have, then it will know what we can do with it. So back to data view. So we've got our dummy data in here. In SPSS, we don't use formulae like we did in Excel. So in Excel, we could type in that equals. But in SPSS, it's more of a point and click. So the menu options at the top are what enable us to analyse our data. The main ones we use are transform, analyse and graphs. So it depends on what you want to do, which one of those you pick. Mostly I use analyse, um, graphs is obviously for making graphs and transform is for um, altering your data in order to make it useful for certain things. So, if I click Analyze, you can see that there's lots of stats options here. So, let's try calculating an average, a mean. So, in order to do that, we'd go to Descriptive Statistics and Descriptives. There's often multiple ways to do it in SPSS. So, there'll be more than one way in which to get the information you need. So once we click on the, the stats function we want to do, a window pops up. This is fairly standard in SPSS. So a box that broadly looks like this is what will pop up. And what this box does is it allows you to choose which variables you want to do your stats on. So in Excel, we had to highlight our data or manually enter the data range. In Excel, because we've got these variables, we can just, again, like I said, point and click. So this one that I called random numbers is currently in the left-hand box. And what I want to do is I want to move it to this right-hand box, which is the active box. It's the one that the stats is actually done on. So to pick it, we click on it in the left hand box and we click this little arrow and that moves it over to the right. So SPSS now knows that we want to do our descriptive statistics on the variable random numbers. So click OK and what happens is this other window pops up. So voila, SPSS has done some stats. Now the function I chose it gives um, a minimum, a maximum, a mean, so an average, and also a standard deviation. And that's just basic from one click um, in Analyze, in Descriptives. So you can see that this other window we've got is the output window, and it's even called output one. Every time you do a, a function or um, a piece of statistical analysis or make a graph in SPSS, the result is put into this output document. So you can keep a record of everything you've done and it all goes into the same output document. 
So if, for example, I now go back into my data set and I go to frequencies, again, pop this across. Okay, so you can see my new um, data that I've just asked it to do is here and above it is still the descriptive statistics that I did before. So it kind of layers, it just makes a list of all the things you've done so that you'll be able to keep a record of what you've done and what you found. Now the important thing is this output document is a separate document from your spreadsheet at the back. So it needs to be saved separately. So if you're doing um, any analysis, make sure to save this document separately. Okay, so that is a very quick demo of how Excel and SPSS are different. The main difference is how we use the program. In Excel, there's a lot of typing um, and a lot of digging around for functions. In SPSS, it's point and click. And I think the variables are a lot easier in SPSS. Um, you don't need to trawl through lots of formulae and you don't have to start highlighting your data or knowing the data range because you can just pick which variables you want.